Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. I represent Storm Spirit players around the world, and inside the channel, you'll find guides on Storm, other heroes, middle lane mechanics, streams, and coaching sessions. Your support keeps the content flowing, and if you'd like to contribute, find out how down below. With all that said, let's go. Void Spirit is the fourth spirit in the 723 patch, and as is tradition, debuted it with a very strong set of spells. And in my humble opinion, those spells are best utilized when playing in the middle. So let's find out how well does the hero perform when allowed to level advantage from the mid lane, and what's the best way we can utilize said advantage. Of course, as this is my first ever Void Spirit match, please excuse the fact that I cannot aim Eta Remnant properly, move in way too close before using Astral Step, and mess up spell combos in general. Also, please excuse the fact that I'm a dumbass and bought Ring of Protection, forgetting that it no longer builds into the Basilus. Anyway, for my starting items, I know I will be casting a lot of spells during laning stage, so Ring of Basilus will help with the mana region, which in turn will help me use spells more often. It also builds into Veil, which is a great item I will mention later. Next, I'm looking into battle at a wand, both needed to keep Void Spirit on the map for as long as possible without returning to the base. You could also build either Bracers or Nulls to further improve survivability or damage respectively, but in this match I've skipped them. Learning Resonant Pulse first allows me to immediately trade hits with Invoker, and also has a secondary usage of securing any last hits for which you are either too far away or they're threatened by opponents higher base damage. It has a cooldown of 11 seconds, so it helps to significantly reduce harassment damage you would otherwise take. Level 2 unlocks us the Dissimulate ability, which will be used to secure last hits and harass, ideally both at the same time. I am not going to level Remnant until way later, as I feel it is the weakest spell in the arsenal for laning, given the activation delay, reduced area of effect, and the fact that creep movement can interfere with it. Laning principle is pretty simple. Activate the pulse, trade some hits, then continue pressuring with Dissimulate. You can use it just on heroes to hold the wave in place longer, or on creeps to push out the lane, which allows us to stack jungle and take the rune. As for jungle itself, the neutral items now begin dropping by the 5 minute mark. Nevertheless, Void Spirit is a great laner against certain matchups, and if I am doing well in the lane, the only way I'll be using jungle is if it was tagged beforehand, which is why I am consistently stacking the medium camp every time I am out for the rune. Clear it from minute 5, grab any item it might drop, and return to the lane to continue collecting those sweet levels. Also, don't forget to participate in every bounty rune collecting, and it's especially important to help your team control the outposts. If you have the advantage, bring it to the side lanes. Radiance top tower be under attack. Don't 
Dyer's middle tower. <laughs> <He takes> fire. <laughs> As a bonus, in this match, I am generating so much pressure in the mid lane that someone from the enemy team has to constantly sit mid to deter any would be tower dives, essentially giving my position one a free lane. And once the mid tower is down, your primary objective is completed. And unless the enemy mid snowballed, or both of your side lanes somehow lost, you should be the strongest hero on the map. So forget that jungle exists, your early game power spike mostly comes from levels, not from items. Just show up to whichever side lane you prefer, and force that tower down. This should be the basis for your gameplay for the remaining of the match. Show up to whichever lane is struggling and force an objective in there. The only time you should be jungling is if you're behind or someone stacked the camps beforehand. Otherwise, make space. Do not worry about the neutral items, your position 1 should routinely pass along any drops he finds if it suits your hero well. Regarding items, Whale improves absolutely everything you like to do, which is to reach and mana and dish out spells. And considering how good the build up items are, I believe it should be built first in almost every occasion. Next item I would recommend are Boots of Travel, as it allows you to teleport to the base, press battle a few times and teleport back to the battlefield fully refreshed. Since Void Spirit mostly relies on spells, the other footwear options do not hold as good of a value as it would on other heroes. As a bonus, you can deep push waves and join fights on the other side of the map momentarily.
From here on, you're flexible. Need some mild defenses against debuffs or to help better initiate? Yules. Need to survive more dangerous lockdowns? BKB. In this match, since all this time I was ahead, I didn't feel threatened at any point and just went Radiant straight away. And Radiance is an item you'll want to get eventually. It's amplified both by Whale and the level 20 talent. As for the remaining items, again, we're very flexible and can itemize according to the match. And seeing as discussing the itemization will require a separate topic, I think what we've got so far concludes the Void Spirit's introduction. I will leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching, good luck! Precious bounty. Oh. There would be no arcane arts without you. Radio, but... Radio, but... Radio, but...